Hey guys, today I want to talk about psychoacoustics with fans. And at the same time, this is also a collaboration with Endorphi to cover their Fluctus case fans. Now, they did send me their 120mm variants, both RGB and non-RGB, to take a look. Now, psychoacoustic optimization is basically a design method and process that has been around for a long time that fan manufacturers use to reduce noise while maintaining static pressure and efficient airflow. But also more accurately, how you perceive sound. And how you perceive sound is not something that can just be told or measured simply with a decibel number. In fact, I'll pull a small portion of Endorphi's video on psychoacoustics because I think they did a pretty good job at explaining all of that. And it's basically just to set the context for the rest of this video. And of course, I will also link that full video down in the description below if you want to watch all of it. When reviewing hardware, it's not enough to say this video card is very loud or this power supply is extremely quiet. Subjective descriptions only go so far and what we need are numbers. Information grounded in measurements, not opinions. This is why reviewers use meters like this one, which let them see noise as a number and then easily compare it to other hardware. Unfortunately, this one number alone cannot fully describe a sound. After all, humans hear differently than a microphone would, and we can easily test this. Let's see how this sound level meter will measure three completely different sounds. First, a pure tone with one kilohertz frequency. Then, three mixed tones, one, one and a half, and two kilohertz. And finally, white noise, which is a mix of all audible frequencies. You probably don't feel that all three sounds were just as annoying, although our microphone and your speakers do not reproduce them perfectly. But the meter says they were all equally loud. So what's really going on? Now, as far as these fans go, I am primarily only concerned with two things. How well do they do thermally against a couple of the best value fans we already have on the market? And what do they really sound like against their competitors based on psychoacoustics? Now, for example, Arctic P12s and Thermal Right TL fans. Reasoning is that Arctic P12s are just really good budget fans. You can get a pack of five for as low as $24, which puts each fan just under $5 a piece. And since the Fluctus fans are RGB, I also had to pick another equivalent competitor that has RGB. And that's where the Thermal Right TL fans come in. You can actually get a pack of five of these for under $19. That's cheaper than the non-RGB Arctic P12s. I'll tell you right now, the Fluctus fans are about $13 to $16 a piece from Amazon and Newegg, and they are currently only sold by Mod by Mods, so they do not compete with P12s and TL fans on price. As a disclaimer, there are a ton of different fans on the market, and I'm not going to test all of them because that would just be way too much, so I think just a few well-known brands that are within the same price bracket and quality would be sufficient just to see where they stand. The numbers I'll be presenting in my test later would be temperatures on my open test bench, and they would be fixed RPMs. Now, I will not be testing this in a closed case because there are just way too many different configurations out there, and doing any single closed case would not be a fair representation in other closed configurations. So to start off, let's take a look at the Fluctus fan from top to bottom. Cosmetically, in my opinion, it looks just like a lot of the other RGB fans on the market, except it's got some teeth on the leading edge of the blades, which I will come back to later. It's a standard 25mm thick fan with the rubber dampeners on each corner. The nine blades themselves are also the diffuser for the RGB as the LEDs will illuminate from the center of the fan. There are two wires as expected, one for PWM and one for ARGB. And yes, they are daisy chainable, and the non-RGB version will only have one wire for the PWM. The Fluctus fans are using FDBs, which are very common. A couple other bearing types just for context are magnetic levitation, such as the ones in some of Corsair's fans, and there is also SSO, which are Noctua's self-stabilizing oil pressure design. Okay, let's talk about psychoacoustic optimization, which has a lot to do with the serrated edges on the fan blades to help reduce noise. Now, I will also have to credit my friend Attila, who is my rep at Noctua, for giving me an explanation 
on their own design for comparison as I think it's very important to know and understand the different types of psychoacoustic designs that different brands will approach in their own products. So in a standard blade design, most commonly without notches, you'll see the spacing between the blades and frame of the fan to be somewhat small. This is to maximize surface area for fan blades to keep static pressure high. However, high static pressure usually comes with higher noise. In short, in order to address the noise issue, Endorphi has opted for having the leading edge of the blades to be serrated, which aims to control incoming airflow to reduce noise. This technique is primarily effective for low to mid-range RPMs, and more so where the inflow is obstructed. For example, when the fans are placed up against a heatsink, radiator, filter, or right up against a mesh panel of a case. In contrast, Noxious technique was to place notches on the trailing edge of the fan blades, which controls the vortex and also at the farthest end of the blade, where the highest velocity happens. This basically scatters the noise into a wider range of smaller frequencies, which greatly reduces the noise further. Additionally, in some of Noxious fans, not this one, they also stagger the notches from blade to blade, which prevents repeated pressure that causes harmonic buildup. Now, Noxua also has several links that explain each individual technique that they use in their designs, which is very helpful. If you are interested and want to read about that, I'll have links down in the description below. So every brand will have a different approach to how they tackle noise reduction in their fans. It really comes down to what they're prioritizing. Now in my tests, the Fluctus fans at max RPM can only be compared to the Arctic P12s because they both go up to 1800, while the Thermal Right fans can only go up to 1550. As for the specs, I'm running a 14700K on Cinebench, no overclocking, just stock settings. I kept this setup as simple as possible, testing purely what a single fan can produce, using a Noxua U12S air cooler and swapping out the single fans I was testing. As you can see, they all run pretty close to the same temps, so obviously, as mentioned before, there are a ton of configs you can do depending on the user, which adds more variables. Temperatures may vary if you had different size radiators and multi-fan setups, but I wanted to see what an individual fan could do one-on-one -on -one against competitors. Okay, so this video has primarily talked about noise optimization, but I only gave tests on temperatures. Let me explain. First, the Fluctus fans aims to reduce noise from low to mid-range RPMs. And I actually talked to the Endorphi team at CES this past January, and they said that the reduced noise is optimized up to about 900 RPM. Now, 900 RPM is not that high. That's basically like idle PC operations, because nowadays most fans will blast 1500 to 2000 RPM on a stock curve when you're doing heavy gaming and work. Although in some configurations, you could run 900 RPM or lower fixed across all your fans regardless of workload if you had a bunch of radiators in a custom loop where you have sufficient heatsink surface area. The fans that I tested for this video, in a common real-world setting such as my room here that doesn't have state-of-the-art acoustically treated space like a professional recording studio, I could not hear any difference whatsoever. Each of the fans did not perform acoustically better than the other at low to mid-range RPM. And remember, psychoacoustics is about how you perceive sound rather than just physical parameters and numbers. So I can only just tell you what I've heard. But with all this complex talk about how you perceive sound, for the most part, PC fans are going to sound like PC fans. It's not like each of these different brands are gonna have significantly different sounding products at varying kilohertz and pure tones, but with matching decibels. So in summary, I think psychoacoustic optimization and noise reduction in general should be focused more towards higher RPMs because that's when your fans are working harder, faster, and most likely noisier. So I think that is also where Noxua's design logic makes more sense. But noise reduction on low to mid-range RPMs like the Fluctus fans is more like Sure, if you can make it less noisy, we'll take it, but I just don't think it's very impactful.